All right, guys, I know you've been waiting for this for a long time, but today we're going to have a shop tour. Before we start, we're going to go back in time, and we're going to go back to the old shop, and I'm going to give you a little clip of that. All right, here's the old shop. Take a look at this. Empty, empty. Let me turn the lights on. It's kind of surreal. I mean, <laughs> so many projects in this garage. I still can remember where everything goes. <laughs> yep, empty, empty. Not a single thing left. It's really weird. It's really weird. Kind of sad to leave it. It's been the last six years. This has been the shop, so there it is. That. So as you saw, that was back basically in the summer, and the family and I we sold that house, and then we bought this land and built this shop and this house here. And I was planning on making videos of taking you guys all the way through the like the build process and all that stuff, but. I didn't for two reasons. One, I wasn't always here when the stuff happened. And two, we were living miles away for at least three months between houses, basically. So it was really hard to get any kind of continuity from beginning to end, that kind of thing. So today we're gonna have a shop tour. So before we get into it, I do want to say that I'm not really the type of person to put things I have and flaunt it out on the internet, that kind of thing. Um, the wife and I, we did work for six years to save for this shop and this property, that kind of thing. Um, YouTube was a huge help, and I want to thank all of you guys for watching my videos and um, helping bring this to light. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I've never done a shop tour video thing before. It's kind of weird, but um, we'll see. Alright, so here is the exterior of the shop. The idea was to have a shop where I could pull cars in and out and I wouldn't have to move any other cars in order to get things in and out. So I decided to model it, model it off of the, uh, you know, the buildings that you see that um, work on cars all day long, and they have bays and doors for each bay. So that's kind of the idea that I did. And um, my measurements for this is the shop is 60 foot by 26 deep and then 12 feet tall. Uh, it's basically tailored to having room to work on C3 Corvettes, so enough room to walk around them, enough room in front and in the back, that kind of thing. The shop was built, the foundation and the building itself was built about a year ago, and I've been working on getting it all decked out and ready to go. So when you're wondering why there wasn't any videos, that's why. And I had to move all my stuff. And I had to move all my family and all that stuff. So that's why there wasn't any videos for a while there. So let's go inside and see what we have. There should be some familiar sights in here. So two things real quick. One, yes, I know my Texas flag is upside down. I know. I haven't gotten there to flip it over, but I know. You don't have to put it in the comments. And two, I've been waiting to do this, like, oh, I need to clean the shop and make it look pretty, make it look perfect, but I decided, why? Because my shop never looks pretty and it never looks perfect. It's, I'm always doing something in it, so there's always tools out and it's always dirty. So why not just show it the way that you'll probably see it if you ever come see it in person? <clears throat> so here on the left, we have basically the main work area, and I situated it next to the lift. So. Uh, we have the four bays, one, two, three, four, and then we have the main work area next to the lift where I kind of, and when I, when I planned it, I planned an extra, I think this is probably eight feet maybe, eight to ten feet from here to here um, in order to have my bench. You guys will probably recognize uh, the toolbox and the benches and you know all that kind of stuff. I'm in the middle of rebuilding front suspension right now. Um, you also recognize some of these license plates. Yes, 
These, most, most of these are license plates that you guys sent me. In the past, I did have a license plate wall, but then obviously moving, you don't have the wall here anymore, so this was my solution on what to do with that. I still have two or three boxes of plates left that I haven't put up yet, that I will put up. I just haven't gotten there. Um, anyway, moving on, we have uh, the toolbox from Harbor Freight Special, uh, the compressor. I have my whiteboard here where I kind of list all the things that need to be done with cars that I'm working on. We have all my jacks and stands and oil drains. We have a really neat uh, battery center, I guess. All the chargers, all the batteries, all that kind of stuff all right here. We'll spend a little bit talking about this lift. So this is an Altex 11,000 pound lift. So yes, it can lift this and it does just fine. Uh, I did, I did buy it new. I did spend a lot of money on it, but here's the thing. I'm going to use this lift the rest of my life. I use it every day. I use it for my job. I was thinking about getting like the used $2,500 lifts, but I don't want to die. <laughs> so I did. I spent the money on it and it hurt. It hurt my soul, but it's done and it's here. So I'll never have to buy another one. But it works out well. It's brand new. See, so you can see right here, 11,000 pound lift right there. Uh, this 82, you've seen in another video in the past, uh, getting work done, almost done working on it actually. So the idea was each, each stall, with the exception of this one with the lift, you know, you have a car here and then a table to put parts from that car on it within a cabinet next to it. Um, right now this, the Cadillac does live in here because I don't have anywhere else to put it yet, but we're getting there. Coming down here, we can see here's my Corvette, which I have been just driving. I probably should work on it. Again, there's a stall with a table. So, <laughs> so I feel like the, the shop is done from there to there. And that's it. Like, I've gotten up to this door, and that's it. The rest is just stuff everywhere. And if you've ever had that much stuff, it's really, it's really hard to take the time to organize it all. So I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. I was wanting to wait till it was all clean and perfect, and there was no stuff everywhere, but there's still stuff. Okay, there's lots of stuff. So the plan is, eventually, this will be clean. Table for the car that's getting worked on here, and then... Over here is something I've always wanted to do, which I did recently, was a steering column rebuild bench. So Corvette steering columns, once they're rebuilt, are actually worth quite a bit of money. And I have all of my parts laid out, all my tools for rebuilding columns, and then an extra vise and a, a beefy table that I built out of my old workbench uh, in order to rebuild these columns. So I've done videos on columns before, but I mainly just put them together and then sell them. You guys will remember this car. Yep, I do still have it. And it actually, here's a little update. Since you guys have watched this far in this video, you will see something wrapped in plastic over here that no one else has seen before. You guys know what that is. That's a rebuilt short block. We got rebuilt cylinder heads right there. So here next week, that's gonna start getting put back together and this car will be being worked on again is I, I don't like having other people's cars here for as long as this one's been here but there was a lot of things that happened all at once between you know selling a property cleaning that property out moving it all over here and then I just didn't want you know to lose anything so the engine did come out here and is shortly gonna go back together so Please, don't ask me if I'll sell this car, because it's not my car, and I cannot sell it to you. Even though I've said that in other videos, it's still get asked, so it's not my car. Here's the main reason why I can't fix the flag. This frame has not sold yet. It's in the way. Yes, it's upside down. Go Puerto Rico. Anyway, um, a couple extra things I did do on the shop. Uh, my idea was 
it's only empty once, let's do it right. I only get one shop and this is the one shop I'm gonna build for the rest of my life. So, I did epoxy the floor myself and spent way too much money doing it. I knew that since my shop isn't one of those, you know, this is my pretty shop and I'd put cars in it and take pictures type shop. It's a shop where it gets work. You know, the work gets done, the floor's gonna get messed up. I knew it would get messed up, so I didn't want to spend like the $10,000 or $12,000 people wanted to, you know, do the polyspartic, really nice, you know, floor covering. So I did it myself. It's going to get tore up, but it's better than bare concrete. So that was the idea. Next was I did do all of the aluminum panels on the side. So these are like Home Depot specials. I think it, it was like $1,000 for all the metal all the way around. So I did do that myself. I wanted it to look nice. I hate the look of spray foam. We'll go into that in a second. Um, but I did do all of that. So the other thing we did is all the electrical. I had a professional electrician put in the breaker box and then run it from my house to here. But I did all the lights. I did um, the HVAC, the lift, all the outlets, all that kind of stuff myself. And then the spray foam I did have professionally done. But I hate the look of spray foam. To me, it looks like rotten cottage cheese, especially when it turns dark yellow. It's just disgusting, so I did paint it. Anyway, do you guys see, like, all the work? I mean, it's just so much work. I would never do it again. It would just takes so much time. I do have a Mr. Cool DIY unit up here, which I mainly use when it's hot outside. It can't really keep up when it's really, really cold, but with the... Um, with the spray foam, it, it, it does well. Um, I do need to figure out a solution to insulate these doors because these doors give off A, a lot of heat in the summer, B, a lot of, you know, they let out a lot of heat in the winter. Uh, this was my idea for insulating them. Haven't gotten that far yet. Again, there's lots of stuff to do. Not a lot of time to do it. So, if the shop wasn't big enough, you're right, it's never big enough. So I had an addition put on it. So part of my, part of my business is I restore the Corvettes, um, I buy and sell the Corvettes, but I also part out the Corvettes. That's a very, very large uh, business part. That's a very large part of my business. And so what I've always wanted, and I never had in the other place, was a parts shop. Basically, it's a place where I can pull a car in, tear it down, store the parts, and then when people ask for something, I can pull off the shelves and give it to them. So let's go check a look at that. Fun fact, this is a door out of my old house. <laughs> so if you remember, I put, the, I put a garage door in for the Cadillac to have a place to live. I took that door out and I kept it. And I kept it for like three years in that garage and then I took it with me. <laughs> so this is out of the old house. Here we go. So it's a little, the foundation's a little lower, but that's okay. And this is actually the exterior wall of the main shop. But this is the part shop. No, I'm not parting this car out. This car is in here just to keep it inside. This is a customer's car, it's not mine. It's probably like shaking in its boots right now because it's in the part shop, but no, I will, I will not be parting this car out. So this is, I spent a lot of time in this little, little area. So basically I have all of my packing. This is all, you know, bags and bubble wrap and paper and stuff for putting in boxes. I have all of my boxes up here. I have my disassembly table, I have my packing table, my scale, and then larger boxes. So basically, for example, like this window regulator, I sold that today, I need to box it up, ship it out. Um, I have all of my assorted bolts, all C3 Corvette specific, and different things in here. And then, yeah, just parts, 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 parts. Eventually, I will be organizing this better. As you can see, I have many, many, many boxes of parts left to organize, but it's a very small amount compared to what I had in the past. So most of it did go up on these shelves. We have a little space over here for uh, Cadillac parts. I have quite a bit collected for that car. And then Everything else is just Corvette stuff, interior stuff. Basically, it's all the stuff that needs to stay inside so it doesn't get destroyed by the weather. All the big metal stuff, body panels and stuff like that can go outside. But I have, yeah, I have a lot of uh, um, organiz organizing to do, a lot of putting away to do. But 
No, it's, it's gone pretty good so far. It's what I wanted it, and it does what I need it to do. So, you know, somebody's like, hey, I need a four-speed shifter. Boom, grab it off the table, or grab it off the shelf, put it on the table, ship it. You know, I need chrome bumpers. I need these fancy headlights. I need whatever they need. I can organize it in a way where I know where everything is. In the future, I plan on putting, this is my old, I don't know if you guys remember this, this is the lift I had in my other shop with the 8 foot ceilings. I kept it because I knew I wanted to potentially use it to part out cars. But in this shop, again, I did all the electric, electrical work myself. I did, I painted the spray foam, had the spray foam put in, I put in this garage door, all that kind of stuff. This was like a mini, a mini version of the big shop. <laughs> so, anyway. So now we're going to take a look outside and kind of show you the back, the back end of the shop. Um, that way you can kind of see it all, it all works together as a whole. So here's the back end of the shop. You can see kind of the main building right here. And then this was an addition that was uh, made and put onto the shop. And they did a really good job kind of making it seamless. Here's that single garage door uh, where I pull, pull in the parts cars and pull them apart. And then I have some extra car storage here for various projects and my wife's Pontiac. Yes, I still have it. Yes, we're still going to work on it. But having a newborn to a two-year-old, that's not the priority, but it's in here, it's, under, you know, it's protected, it'll be fine. I have a couple of these other ones that may or may not make it onto the channel, we will see. I mean, it just really depends on whatever sells first. And here's the fun part. So you can't see any of this from the road, and I did that on purpose. Is that all these parts cars all the way down. So if you need Corvette parts, let me know. So the idea is, we'll take a car, we'll put it in here, blow it all apart, put all the parts where they are supposed to go, you know, a specific place for everything, then that way I know where everything is. And eventually all these cars will, will disappear. But we can kind of walk through them. If you guys see anything you want, send me an email. I hate email, but it works. We have a... 1982 right here We have this car which actually I made a video on uh, a couple months ago. You might remember that We have this 77 right here What used to be a 75? Also another 75 What used to be a 74? These two bird cages used to be 77s This was a 76 1981, 1977, 1981, another 1981, this was a 68, 69, and no, you don't want to build this car, you want to see why? That's why. Yeah, it's too far gone guys, it's just not, it's not worth it. 1977. This actually was a four-speed L82 car. It's a shame it got wrecked. There's a wide body, 1980, another 1981, 77, 79, 75, 78, 78, 74, 75, 70. So yeah, that's one too many. <laughs> I got so many cars, but you know, eventually they all get recycled. They all get used again. No, I, don't, I just throw, I throw almost nothing away. Almost all of it gets sold. Here's some fun things that may or may not be on the channel at one point. We'll see. But I have two acres now instead of one, so a little bit more room to to hold stuff. But again, all all my stuff I. I eventually want to sell. It needs to go. I can't keep all of it. Well, here's a kind of a back view of the shop. And there it is. Well, there it is. Um, it's sure dirty and sure unorganized, but we're getting there. We're trying. Um, if you guys have any questions, I mean, let me know. Um, I'll pay attention to the comments and, and try to answer as much as I can. Um, 
I really don't know what else to say about the shop tour other than this is the shop. It's a work in progress. Uh, it will happen when it happens, I guess. So, um, but this is the shop that you guys will see on, from here on out on any future project videos, anything like that. Um, yeah, so I just want to end it by saying some people might think I'm super lucky to have this, and I agree, I am. I'm very super lucky to have this, but it wasn't by chance, it wasn't a fluke, it's because my wife and I worked hard, and this is what we saved for, and this is what we got. So anybody can do that, anybody can work hard, and buy the things that they want. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.